because it's my belief, even though it may be sophomoric and not a sophisticated view of it or a, an adult view of it, that there are some crimes that are so heinous and so repugnant to human society that the death penalty given to a person who is of sound mind and intentionally carried out that crime is appropriate to require them to forfeit their life. So I, I feel it very strongly, but I feel it almost as strongly, if not equally as strongly, that if we're going to do it, it needs to be done correctly. It needs to be done fairly. It needs to be done fully. It needs to be done with a, a attention to it that would be in the, connected to the most important decisions in anybody's life. In other words, it needs to be done well. We need to have fair juries properly selected. We need to have prosecutions where the prosecutor is not, does not abuse his power or her power, does not deny to the defendant information and material and knowledge that that defendant and the lawyer should have, does not do those things which make it impossible to have a fair and proper trial and a knowledgeable decision by a jury. It goes beyond that, though, today, and it goes beyond it in no small part because of the advent of DNA technology that allowed us to establish not just that a person was not guilty, but that a person was innocent. There are many criminals who urge constantly that they didn't do the crime, that they are innocent of the crime. And many of those people have been put to death. And it wasn't until 1988 when the first capability to test the DNA from the crime scene with genetic material from the crime scene, with hair and protein and all those things that go with crime scenes, they were able to say with incredible accuracy, if properly run, that this was the, the DNA of that particular person. So what it does, it establishes identity immediately. It does what the eyewitness tries to do, but may be incorrect or faulty. It does what a lot of serology, blood examinations, these things may be faulty. DNA is almost a perfect technology. This is 22 years later. Some of the people presently on death row in some of these states were already on death row. They had already been convicted. All the appellate process routinely carried out in connection with death penalty cases other than final pleas for whatever to governors and to for clemency and to the Supreme Court to hear it. They're all passed. And when they're passed, what do you do with them? They have a product that's been produced properly in the courts. But now you have evidence that if the DNA was made available and the DNA testing was done against this defendant, you might well find, and we have 225 times, found that the person who claimed and claimed and claimed that innocent was in fact innocent and they're no longer on death row, and they're no longer in prison. They were improperly charged, although nobody thought it was faulty. So the point is, it does it. Now, how do you get access to the DNA? If the DNA is in the folder of a, of a prosecutor, in a manila folder, in a locker somewhere back in police evidence room, and you never gotten it, and you want it, and you're sure that would give you the basis for a declaration of innocence? How do you get it? Courts don't like to do it because they've already gone through all the procedure. Prosecutors do not like to do it for the same reason. Legislators do not like to do it, apparently, because it's a mess. Because here they are, 15 years later, finding that a plea to match, just match, just match, just compare it may prove the innocence of this man who has long since been in prison and, and destined to die. When it's done 225 times, what do you know? 
It's not his DNA. This is an integral part of the case, never presented, never used, never tested. Then we come to those circumstances where the person, since his or her conviction, maybe 20 years ago, or the final appeals were done 15 years ago, have been going through a series of new lawyers, maybe, on habeas corpus, habeas corpus lawyers, not necessarily criminal trial lawyers, maybe really pretty much representing himself. No money available for the lawyers to do the investigation necessary to find this stuff. No means of a lawyer to speak for those people in connection with that. I'm not saying it happens every time, but it does happen.